Good morning, good morning, good morning. Happy New Year, church family. Happy New Year. Yes, God has brought us through another year, and here it is, and we just give thanks and praise to God Almighty for being such a mighty God. We're just so blessed. We're blessed over and over again. Scripture tells us to lift up our heads, O ye gates, and be lifted up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory shall come in. Who is the King of glory? The Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. Lift up your heads, O ye gates. Lift up, ye everlasting doors, and the King of glory will come in. Who is the King of glory? the Lord of hosts. He is the King of glory. Let us now pray. Let's just take a deep breath and petition God this morning. We just bless God. We bless you, Lord God. We honor you, Lord God. Breathe on me, breath of God. Fill me with life anew, that I may love what thou dost love, and do what thou wouldst do. Breathe on me, God, until my heart is pure, until with thee I will one will, to do and to endure. Our Father and our God, we come before you this morning on this first Sunday of a brand new year. Yes, Lord. A year of new beginnings. Hallelujah. Just to say thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you for allowing us to see this day, this first Sunday. We thank you, Lord, for being our way maker, our heart fixer, our healer, our deliverer, our mind regulator. We thank you, Lord, for your grace and for your mercies that we see every, new, every morning. New mercies, Lord, we see. For you are faithful to each and every one of us. We declare you to be the king of glory in our lives. Yes, Lord. And we lift our heads to you. We look to you from which comes all our help. Lord, we ask that you forgive us of our sins and our trespasses. Help us, Lord, to forgive those who sin against us. And lead us, dear Lord, in the paths of righteousness. Lord, bless this service this morning. Be with our pastor and the musicians and all who will are participating. Lord, we couldn't be here, a lot of us in person this morning, but you have the ultimate goal in mind. You said, Lord, if my people will turn from their wicked ways, then you will heal the land. And Lord, we're just petitioning you now to heal our land. And also, Lord, we come this morning to lay before you all of our concerns. We come before you asking for healing of our minds, our souls, and our bodies. Some of us are facing health issues in our families with our relatives and our friends, surgeries, undergoing tests, treatment for cancer, dealing with COVID-19, with the COVID-19 virus, mental and other conditions. Some of us, Lord Jesus, are grieving for our loved ones who have transitioned to their eternal rest. And this morning especially do we pray for the families of Sister Alice Myers, a faithful member 
of Nottingham Myers United Methodist Church. Yes, Lord. And for Mr. Nat Adams, who has been a servant in our church and communities in the time of loss of loved ones. Please comfort them and give them the strength that they need during this time of bereavement. We pray for our students of all ages who are struggling because of the effects of the virus in our school system. We pray for their parents and those who have to administer to them, to their teachers. Lord God, you know all about this situation. We pray for the families who are struggling financially and have other difficulties. Lord, we put all our trust in you. Hold our hand and guide us, dear Lord. You, Lord, you, Lord, are our refuge and our strength. You, Lord, are our ever-present help in the time of need. Your words tell us to make our petitions known to you and then be thankful and rejoice. So we thank you, Lord, for what you have done, what you are doing right now, and what you will do tomorrow. We praise you. We magnify you. And Lord, most of all, we want you to know how much we love you. For Lord, you gave the ultimate gift to us when you sent your son down to us as we just finished going through the Christmas celebration. All these things we ask in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen, amen, and amen. Amen. Now join with us this morning as we sing one of the old hymns of the church. We've come this far by faith, leaning on the Lord, trusting in his holy word. For he's never, ever, ever, never failed us yet. We've come this far by faith.
failed us. And we give thanks to God this morning. Well, it's January. Yeah. The first month of the year. And we have some birthdays that we need to celebrate. And so we'd like to wish on behalf of the uh, parish, and I'm sorry I don't have some of the folks from Nottingham Myers, but we would like to, uh, to um, mention that Brother Don, uh, Ronald Banks, um, his granddaughter Elizabeth Cobb, Brother Arthur du uh, Carnell Duckett, Jr., Sister Andrea Holland, Mistresses Lachey and Lye Lee, Sister Sharon Robinson, Sister Fanny Savoy, Mistress Carla Slater, Sister Phyllis Slater, Master Dominic Streakland, and Brother Anthony Taylor. All of these folk are celebrating their January birthdays. So let's do a little birthday celebration with them. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday to ya. Happy birthday. hope you enjoyed our serenade <laughs> and we hope that all of you will have an enjoyable birthday when it uh, comes for this month. We'd just like to remind you today, today that uh, if we have moved our communion service to the second Sunday and so therefore if you'd like to come by and pick up your communion uh, elements today at either church come between now and 12 o'clock, uh, someone will be here to distribute the elements to you. And also, if you'd like to drop off your offering, we can do that also. You can do that. On Tuesday, I'd like to remind you that we're back with our noonday prayer. It will be by Zoom, and so I ask that you check your email so that you will be able to participate we will send that out to you. Uh, and then on Tuesday at 7 p.m., the Unified Board of Nottingham Myers will meet by Zoom, and all our members are asked to plan to participate. United Methodist Women, we will have our first meeting for the year on Saturday, June 8th at 10 a.m., and more information will be emailed to you. As part of our upcoming events, we ask that you join us beginning J January 12th, 2022 at 7 p.m. We will be going back into our weekly Bible study. And so far this year, our series is going to start with self-care, and you will be getting more information about it. Uh, on January the 30th at Nottingham Myers, they will be hosting a COVID-19 vaccine clinic, and it will begin at 12.30 p.m. We do ask you to listen up for more details about that. Also, we're honoring and celebrating the cherished memories of our loved ones with a pictorial display in our sanctuary. Uh, it was uh, during Black History Month. To participate, 
you must submit a photograph of your loved one along with, we ask that you uh, also submit a donation equal, equaling their age when they passed or the age they would have been in 2021. The deadline to make these submissions would be January 16th. For further de details, we will be sending out emails and letting you know what else we may have to change. But you may also contact Brother Russell Young, Sister Joyce Lee, or myself. Now, sow a seed offering. Every year, our members of both churches are asked to sow a seed offering during the month of January. This year, the seed offering is $122. Please prayerfully consider supporting and contributing to this offering. The seed offering will be used to help our churches in our mission and ministries. And if you're not able to contribute during the month of January, you can always contribute all during the year. So we thank you for your obedience to God and to his ministries. Amen. It's offering time. Yay. <laughs> yeah. Hallelujah. <laughs> it's offering time. And we ask if you have your offering or if you've already dropped it off, we appreciate your support. And so we're, now we will have our offering prayer. God of this day and all days, we can only imagine the darkness of the world into which you sent your son. A world that believed that salvation rested on our ability to follow the rules. Jesus came to bring light into that darkness and into our darkness. As we bring our tithes and offerings to you this day, transform them into light for the hungry, for the hopeless, for the forgotten, and the oppressed. We shall share his light in us. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. It's praise and worship time. And even though you're home, we ask you to join us in our praise and worship as we lift God higher in song. Give God glory and praise yeah. for what a mighty God we serve. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Bless his name. Pray for us. Bless his name. Hallelujah. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. What a mighty God we serve. Sing it hallelujah. 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 What a mighty God we serve. Yeah. What a man. 
y'all. Clap your hands. Yeah. Let's praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Clap your hands. Let's praise the Lord. Clap your hands. Let's praise the Lord. Clap your hands. Come on, praise the Lord. Clap your hands. Come on, praise the Lord. Clap your hands. Come on, praise the Lord. Hallelujah.
that joy. I know that joy is mine. Peace is mine. Peace. Peace is mine. Peace is mine. Peace today. small in number in here but that won't be forever so I want everybody who's at home to rest up because the time will come when we come back into the building and we gotta praise God like we've never praised God before amen let us have a word of prayer Gracious and loving God, through me or in spite of me, I ask that you use me to deliver a message to your people on today. Your people physically, your people virtually, and your people around the world need to hear a word from you. So we ask, oh God, that at the closing of this word, that no one who has logged in or who has walked into this place leaves the same way in which they came in. In Jesus' mighty name we pray, amen. 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 As you all know, we are kind of going virtual for the month of January. And even though we are going virtual, we still want to encourage you to participate in the worship services. We still want to encourage you to participate in the activities and the different things we're going to be doing and learning in this coming year. Because we are in a season that I'm going to explain very shortly about preparing to receive. So our word today is going to come from this, the book of 2 Samuel. And it's chapter 11, verses 14 through 27. It's coming from 2 Samuel, chapter 11, verses 14 through 27. And I'm reading out of the New Revised Standard Version, and it reads, In the morning, David wrote a letter to Joab and sent it by the hand of Uriah. In the letter he wrote, Set Uriah in the forefront of the hardest fighting, and then draw back from him so that he may be struck down and die. As Joab was besieging the city, he assigned Uriah to the place where he knew there were valiant work warriors. The men of the city came out and fought with Joab, and some of the servants of David among the people fell. Uriah the Hittite was killed as well. Then Joab sent and told David all the news about the fighting, and he instructed the messenger, when you have finished telling the king all the news about the fighting, then if the king's anger arises, and if he says to you, why did you go so near the the city to fight? Did you not know that they would shoot from the wall? Who killed Abimelech, son of Jeroboam? Did not a woman throw an upper millstone on the heel on him from the wall so that he died at Thebes? Why did you go so near the wall? Then you shall say, 
Your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead too. So the messenger went and came and told David and all that Joab had sent him to tell. The messenger said to David, the men gained an advantage over us and came out against us in the field, but we drove them back to the entrance of the gate. Then the archers shot at your servants from the wall. Some of the king's servants are dead, and your servant Uriah the Hittite is dead also. David said to the messenger, thus you shall say to Joab, do not let this matter trouble you, for the sword devours now one and now another. Press your attack on the city and overthrow it and encourage him. When the wife of Uriah had heard that her husband was dead, she made lamentation for him. When the morning was over, David sent and brought her to his house, and she became his wife and bore him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. In meditating for this season that we are in, the Lord has been telling me since July that our parish must prepare to prepare to receive. And while I must admit I was not fully aware of the fullness of what it meant at that time, we have been moving and shifting at what feels like a rapid pace. God wants us to know that one day this season of uncertainty will end, and God does not want us to wait until it ends to prepare for what we shall receive. We must prepare now. In all of our lives, we desire things. I spent time over the past week calling a few folks in the parish to find out what they were hoping to accomplish in the new year. And so many of them had great things to say. They said, I want a car, I want a new house, I want to, to get my business off the ground, I want to go back to school. All of these things are so wonderful. And while it is important to receive the things we desire, we must also be prepared to receive them. So for instance, if you do want that new house, you don't just prepare mentally for the fact that you will pay a mortgage. Your budgeting and your finances have to be in tip-top shape. You must have an emergency savings for the general wear and tear around the house. You must recognize that there is a possibility that you may need to replace appliances. You must have a different mindset and sometimes different than the people around you. You must be prepared for rejection, especially in the market that we're facing today. And you must be prepared for the naysayers around you because you are surpassing them or you are getting on their level and they don't like it. Right. And so it is important to position yourself to receive. And one of the first concepts that God wants us to explore in this season of preparation is the concept of releasing the desire to be in control. One thing about your pastor is, I'm a planner. I like to have plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K, L, M, N, O, P, all the way down to Z. I like to sit and analyze the best solutions for things to work out for everyone. I like to do the theoretical heavy lifting so that everyone else can just focus on showing up and maybe completing one or two tasks. And while some appreciate this, it's only beneficial if there is room in the plan for flexibility or complete change. And sometimes there's not always room in our mindsets for that. Sometimes we just can't wait to go back to doing things the way we used to do them. Sometimes we feel like this is just a contingency plan until we get back in the building or, or whatever the case may be, but we don't actually take the time to learn what it is in this season that we need to learn to go through to prepare us for what's next. Right. And if you're a planner like me, then you recognize that releasing control is not always easy to do. Releasing this desire to just 
mentally prepare for things to, to work out or to not work out. But God has some tools he wants to teach us in this month that will help us. Today we're going to be looking at my main man, David, right? David is known as the man after God's own heart. He was a shepherd that was underestimated by all around him, his father, his siblings, King Saul, and the list goes on and on and on. But see, God blessed him anyway, right? He didn't have the look of a leader, but God granted him leadership anyway. He didn't have the educational background to qualify for the job, but God granted it anyway. He didn't have the credit to go out on his own and buy a house, but God had a castle ready for him anyway. And yet with all these blessings, he still found a way to give into evil and to spread it all over his family. To a point where even a man named Joseph who was in his lineage, could not even find an end to welcome Jesus Christ into the world. In this series, we are going to break down all aspects of control. Part one is about how we become victims of control. Part two is about when we've changed and still want to be in control to keep things the same. Part three is about choosing the antidote to God's healing. And part four is about release. People are affected by control. They are affected by the things we do to control them, like Bathsheba and Uriah. David was at home. At the beginning of this chapter, we will read, or we read, that David was at home and noticed a beautiful woman bathing. This man with great power and authority who was filled with God's full authority to, to win whatever battle he faced, he, he, he knew what it meant to be powerless. The man was not, was not even brought to Samuel initially. This man who evaded death several times against Saul, this great man, he sees Bathsheba, a married woman, and takes her. And because he is revered so much, Bathsheba's husband doesn't even understand the cover-up that's happening. He only desires to serve him in battle. And what does David do? David plans and arranges to kill him to maintain his reputation, to maintain his control, and to get what he wanted. And while this may or may not have ever happened to us, I hope not, we're in 2021, but there have been times that we have experienced someone looking us dead in our face and they're plotting behind the scenes to betray us, plotting behind the scenes trying to figure out how they can control the narrative of what's happening. Like when you have great trust in a friend and they are preparing behind your back to betray you. Like when you've put in countless hours at work, never asked for overtime pay, didn't always get your reimbursements, and they still fire you. Like when you work hard to make your family proud, and you do all the things, you're the caregiver, you're the main one that they call on when they need, and they still don't appreciate you. And for Uriah's dedication in our text today, he receives the orders at the very beginning in chapter, in verse 14, without knowing it, he receives the orders for his death sentence. David uses his power of control and he ruins countless lives around him because he doesn't just affect Uriah. Several people die. Bathsheba is, is, who knows what the world is thinking about her in that kingdom, right? That, that's not in the Bible. And then, in addition to all of that, David is just, he don't even care. He don't even care. And he eventually loses the baby that he fought so hard to try to keep in his own lineage. And, and, and before we get upset with David, before we get irritated with David, 
How many times have we hurt those closest to us because we were going through something that had nothing to do with them? How many times have we decided that because we've been hurt, then we will go out and hurt others? And the reality is, in those moments, while we can simply apologize and even mean it, right, we can't take back what we said. We can't take back what we did. And we have to sit back and recognize that sometimes you can't fix this. You cannot control how the other person feels or responds to you when you've hurt them. As bad as you want to. But the good thing is, God will fix it. You can't fix it, but God will. And we're going to focus on God fixing it next week. <laughs> but <laughs> our three points today, and then we getting out of here. Number one. It's obvious. If you have done something to someone and you have betrayed them, the first thing should be obvious. Apologize and repent. You have to apologize. David didn't even apologize. We all know that David did not even apologize. You have to apologize and repent. That's number one. Number two, be at peace with the consequences for your actions. Be at peace with the fact that because you did what you did, it may have, you may have lost a friendship. Because you did what you did, you may have lost the relationship with a family member. Because you did what you did, you may have lost your job or whatever it is. But number three, move forward in knowing that God is not done with you yet. Just because we make mistakes does not mean that God is finished with us. It is setting us up for what's next in our journeys. So number one, if you betrayed somebody in this season, it's January 2nd, you have time. Apologize and repent. Number two, be at peace with the consequences. And number three, move forward in knowing that God is not done with you yet. Amen. Amen. The doors of the church are now open. If you don't know Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior, and you are starting out this year, and you want this year to be, to be right, I'm here to tell you that the kingdom of God is getting ready to shift in a mighty way. All those who serve God will receive something from God this year. They will receive a blessing from God this year. They will receive wholeness from God this year. So if you want that to be you, and you want to know more about this man named Jesus, I invite you to get in contact with us at Nottingham Myers and Christ United Methodist Church. If you've backslid and you've come out of connection with, with God and your relationship, you haven't been praying, you haven't been reading your Bible, you haven't been meditating, you haven't been going to Bible study, you haven't been going to church, you haven't been watching church, I invite you to get in contact with us to reestablish that connection. Because that connection is so powerful. It leads to your purpose, it leads to you understanding who you are, who you were designed to be, and it leads to your wholeness. And last but not least, if you don't have a church home and you're looking, you're looking to find out where can I grow? Where can I go where I will feel the presence of God? I invite you to get in contact with us while we compete over which church will get your membership. Amen. I invite you to get in contact with us at Nottingham Myers and at Christ United Methodist Church. We would love to have you. We'll love on you. We'll find out if you need anything, and we'll be there for you. Amen.
at this time in your homes, while I cannot ask you to stand, I will ask you to open your heart and open your arms to receive the benediction from the Lord. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May heaven smile upon you. And until we see each other again face to face, may God bless your coming. May God bless your going. May a hedge of protection be around your families in the midst of this surge. And may you come out of it with immense favor, with immense prosperity and immense blessings. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Amen. Amen. Like the Holy Ghost party, cause the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party, cause the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Ain't no party like the Holy Ghost party, cause the Holy Ghost party don't stop. Ain't no party